Today, I'm going to be answering the most commonly asked questions about the third trimester because the third trimester can be the most exciting and the most anxiety inducing period of pregnancy. You're going to be meeting your baby soon, which is amazing, but the time leading up to that can be filled with a lot of uncertainties and questions. And I'm gonna answer the most common questions now, but first, if you are new here, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You are watching In the Pink, and if you're new here, In the Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, make sure you click subscribe because you are in the right place. So before I get started, let me know in the comment section below if you are in your third trimester now or if you're still in your first or your second trimester. I love to read about what brought you here. But now, without any further ado, let's jump into question number one. Is it normal that my hands and my feet are swollen? So swelling, also called edema, is pretty common at this stage of your pregnancy. You might notice more swelling in your hands and in your feet and in your ankles, and it's caused by the increase in your pregnancy hormones. Your body does this partly in preparation for the blood loss during your delivery, and also partly because of your enlarging uterus, putting pressure on the vessels going from your legs up to your heart. This makes it harder for the blood to move back up to your heart, and the result is swelling in your legs and your ankles and feet. Now keep in mind, you can't always make the swelling go away, but elevating your legs can help. Also reducing your salt intake, avoid standing or sitting for a long period of time, and walking frequently can all help. You can also pick up some compression stockings. These are the actual ones that I wore during all four of my pregnancies. Not the sexiest things you'll ever put on, but they really do make a difference. Things to watch out for, however, if you notice a very sudden increase in your swelling or swelling in just one leg, call your OB right away. Also, if you notice your rings are getting tight, you might just wanna take them off until after the baby is born. Number two, most women start to feel their baby's movements around 16 to 24 weeks. During your third trimester, your OB will usually ask you to do something called kick counting. Kick counting is where you monitor the baby's movements each day. Once a day, you should be able to count at least 10 movements every two hours. And even though it's called kick counting, you aren't just watching for kicks. Any movement counts. So a punch, a roll, or a stretch, those all count too. Also keep in mind that you don't have to feel the baby move 10 times every two hours throughout the day because sometimes the baby is sleeping or just isn't as active. But at least once a day during a two hour period, you should feel the baby move 10 times. And if not, call your OB. Also, if you just feel like the baby is moving less than they normally do, give them a call as well. Number three, why do I need a Tdap? The CDC recommends the Tdap vaccination for pregnant women during her late second trimester to her third trimester. Tdap is three vaccinations in one. It's tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. And the reason this vaccine is important during your pregnancy is to prevent your newborn from catching pertussis, also known as whooping cough. About 1,000 newborns are hospitalized and five to 15 infants die from whooping cough each year. And the best way to protect your newborn from this is getting the vaccination while you're pregnant so that you can develop an antibody response and then pass that immunity onto your baby. Number four, how will I know if I'm in labor? So this is probably your most pressing concern in your last trimester. <laughs> Science still doesn't have an answer on how to predict exactly when you're going to deliver your baby. Now, of course, you have your estimated due date. Your OB or midwife gave you this based on your last menstrual period or your ultrasound findings. But the baby usually comes anytime between 37 to 42 weeks of your pregnancy. That's like five weeks of watchful waiting. So some signs to watch out for painful contractions in your belly. The contractions start to become more frequent as labor progresses. For example, it might start out every two hours and then gradually increase in frequency and intensity. A general rule is the 5-1-1 rule. If you're having contractions every five minutes and each contraction lasts one minute, and this has been happening consistently for an one hour, it's time to go to the hospital. Now this is a general rule and you should make sure to talk to your OB about the best plan for you. Keep in mind that a painless gush of water is also a sign that it's time to go to the hospital. Angie, I think your water broke. Wait, what? Number five, how long will labor last? 
So if you have a normal delivery, you can expect labor to last between 12 to 18 hours if it's your first baby, and between six to eight hours on your subsequent babies. Also, a typical C-section will take less than an hour from start to finish. So the time for labor can vary a lot, depending on the presence of any problems during your labor. For example, if there's too much blood loss, or if your cervix isn't dilating quickly enough, or if your baby doesn't move down as expected, or if you're delivering more than one baby, all these situations might make your labor last longer. Number six, is labor painful? Yes, it is very painful. Please, no, no! It's like a menstrual cramp, but multiplied by 10 or more. No! But with the advent of spinal and epidural anesthesia in vaginal deliveries, your sense of pain is significantly decreased without affecting your ability to push your baby out. However, some mothers opt for the more traditional path and deliver their babies without any anesthesia. You follow whatever is the most comfortable for you. Number seven, what does a mucus plug look like? So a mucus plug forms at the opening of your cervix and the general thought is that it might be there to prevent entry of bacteria and other microbes into your uterus during pregnancy to protect your baby. However, as the time for delivery approaches and your cervix starts to thin out and to dilate, the plug can be expelled. And the mucus plug can appear like a white, elongated, whitish sticky discharge and sometimes it will appear as a smear and it can be pinkish if there's an accompanying bloody show which is also a sign that labor is near now just passing the mucus plug doesn't mean that you're in labor but it's good to mention it to your ob if that happens number eight how will I know if my water broke? So we often see this depicted in the movies as like a sudden gush of painless watery discharge, but sometimes it's not gonna be a gush. Sometimes your water doesn't gush out, but it just leaks. And this makes it a little confusing because it's not uncommon for you to have a little bit of urinary leakage when you're in your third trimester. So it might be hard to tell if you're leaking amniotic fluid or if it's just pee. And if you're not sure, your OB can test the fluid to see if it's pee or amniotic fluid. And if it's amniotic fluid, it's time to go to the hospital. Number nine, I can't wait for my baby. Can I induce my own labor? So if you're post-term or beyond 42 weeks, your OB might suggest that you can do certain things at home to help you go into labor. But in general, no, you really can't induce your own labor. I quit. There are several circumstances that can precipitate labor, like an infection or a surgical problem like an appendicitis, but obviously that's not ideal. So if your baby is doing well and you don't have any other medical conditions, usually the best thing to do is wait until your baby is ready to meet you. Number 10, is sex safe in the third trimester? So in general, it's totally safe to have sex throughout your entire pregnancy. However, there's always the exception. If you have a history of preterm birth, if you have a placenta previa, which is a condition where the placenta is covering the opening of your cervix, or if you have unexplained bleeding, it's not recommended to have sex at any time. Always discuss this question with your OB because it's really a case by case situation. Theoretically, yes, sex might induce contractions because of the prostaglandins in the semen. However, studies show that even though sex could bring on contractions, that doesn't mean that it's going to bring on labor. But in any case, if your pregnancy is healthy, sex is considered to be safe. Number 11, what birth control options do I have after giving birth? As far as birth control goes, there are permanent and temporary birth control options. So if you know you're done having kids, you can opt for something called a bilateral tubal ligation, where your fallopian tubes will be tied off or clipped off so that the egg cannot travel down into the uterus to get fertilized. This is considered a permanent kind of birth control. Other less permanent options include an IUD or inner uterine device, which can be done at the same hospital admission as your delivery or about six weeks after you deliver. Or you can have an implant that goes underneath the skin on the inside of your arm that releases progesterone. Or you can take what's called the mini pill, which is also progesterone only. We don't prescribe the traditional birth control pill that has both estrogen and progesterone if you're planning on breastfeeding because estrogen can dry up your milk. Number 12, can I travel in my third trimester? Yes, you can travel if you feel well enough. 
The third trimester spans from 28 weeks to 40 weeks, so there's still a lot of time before you give birth. However, most airlines won't allow women beyond 36 weeks of their pregnancy to board the plane. If you plan on traveling far, especially international flights, make sure to double check with the airline about the restrictions because it might actually be earlier. Now, if you have a risk for preterm labor, your doctor might not want you to travel for the entire third trimester, so make sure to discuss that with them. Also, when you travel, make sure that you stand up and walk around every hour to keep the blood circulating throughout your legs. And finally, number 13, how long will I stay in the hospital? So your hospital stay will depend on whether you deliver vaginally or through a C-section. With a vaginal delivery, you will usually be admitted for 24 to 48 hours. However, with a C-section, you're usually gonna be in the hospital from anywhere to three to four days. Keep in mind, these are both for uncomplicated deliveries. Okay, that's it. I hope that most of your questions for your third trimester were in this video, and I hope that I answer them well for you. If you have other questions about your third trimester, put them in the comment section below. And if there's enough, I might just need to do a part two of this video. Also remember to subscribe to Diana in the Pink. And if you're new to my channel, I've actually made an entire pregnancy series where I walk you through pregnancy week by week. Each video will tell you about the week of pregnancy that you're at, what to expect at your OB appointment, problems that you might be experiencing, and of course, baby development. So I'm gonna link to that playlist right here. Click on that and I will see you over there.